This is somewhere off the road to a lot and is so remarkably beautiful that I stopped and took a video on Saturday the 14th. This is the van I'm driving and this is where I'm at. It's a beautiful, beautiful, incredible place. Here's another spot on Saturday the 14th around 1 p.m. or so Israeli time that I'm taking these videos of for my beautiful audience to watch. It is absolutely incredible. Incredible. Look at that. And so NASA is a small fraction of what is going on in space right now, worldwide. And, and I mean, think about uh, the GPS, which was, of course, a military project. Entire industries exist only because of that. So that's the future. I mean, it, it's kind of amazing to me, but I, I will admit it, it gives me a little bit of pause when you think about all these private companies going into space. It was hard enough to control when it was a few countries that were sending things up there. Yeah. How do we control what's happening in space when, uh, you know, well, it's anybody's what, game? It's why there's regulations. I mean, how do you control airplanes and make sure they don't fall out of the sky? You know? Are there enough regulations for space right now? No. <laughs> well, I, it, you know, it's a, a little bit of a wild west. And, you know, what happens if you put up a... Subaru backwards. He said, which is very funny because I drove a bus for my career and now I'm driving a Subaru, which is you are a bus backwards. So take care of my friend and have a great Christmas. Signed, Craig 153 in the bank. Line. You know, you have the number 153. He got in in the uh, first, the end of the first year. I was already up to 153 at that point. So he's from late 2002, listening here to 60s on 60s. המשך ישר במשך 25 דקות אל 31 מערב.
confirmed. So that's on the that's already on the way. Uh, another thing is, of course, the new foreign investment law that took place in January, uh, which raised criminal penalties for uh, stealing technology. So these things were in the works. Uh, phase two is going to have much harder items, including industrial.
opened up this whole incident, this whole uh, trade war. So oh yeah, you heard me say from day one, so absolutely, should. absolutely. Yeah. The only thing I would have done differently is bring Europe on and have, have a United Front. I think that's to do anything for it. I, I think Europe out. shares the same grievances. And it's interesting that overnight, China and Germany have seen an increase in that tension. What happened in the last 20 years? Well, I'm trying to bring them. Okay, that's actually pretty good. You know, what about the worst it's been? Yeah. I, you know what though, Joe, that could be her baseline, you know, because, uh, so that's actually, that's actually okay. Um, I hope her infection is clearing up and they're giving her her psych medicines too. I would that's imagine. Nice. So, we're leaving a lot December 30th and uh, we're going to Tel Aviv and we're driving up there and we're looking at the Jordanian mountains where we saw them closer up yesterday on our way to Petra. And I'm here with my wonderful family. Victoria is the videographer. She's getting a lot of credit for that. And, uh, right, right. It's like she's point. a fucking doctor, which In is Petra? not. Petra? No. I didn't like it because I didn't like how they're treating their right. animals. So, what she didn't like about Petra, not the fact that the mountains are gorgeous, and she likes the sink, which is the comfortable between the mountains. She just didn't like the way the animals were being treated. They were carting them around, pulling them on mules. Yeah, and there were so many like, like, like really hungry dogs there. It's straight, there were a lot of stray dogs, <clears throat> but they're not fed yeah, well yeah, because yeah, the yeah, people yeah. there are very poor. That's the reason I was trying to explain to her. Yeah, but that doesn't give them a right to whip their animals yeah. or force them down mountains they don't want to walk down. Well, a mule okay, is that when he wants to do his own way. Yeah, had, it was scared. I know, but he would stay there for the rest of his life. And or he could, no, but he would have, he could have gone down a different way. The guy was just being stubborn and said, no, you have to go down this way. I okay. don't know if he could have. That's all yes, okay. he could have. How do you think they got up? That way. No, they didn't. How do you know? To watch. I'm positive they didn't. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, mom too. Yes, I was very sure what they said. Anyways, I was trying to tell that right, the boys right, right. That was the same with mom. You remember that with the suctioning the stuff? With yeah, with yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, it's Mason, her psychiatrist, or is that who that is? Is he her psych doc? Is he her psych doc?
the night of Hanukkah when a man with a large knife stormed inside. Police say they do have a suspect in custody this hour. New York's governor has activated the state's hate crime task force in response. And this attack is the latest in a string of anti-Semitic attacks, most of them happening in New York and uh, the New York City region. Uh, CNN's Orrin Lieberman joins us now live from Jerusalem. What has been the reaction there? We just got a reaction from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who responded not only to the attack in Muncie, New York, but the broader phenomena of attacks that we're seeing throughout New York. And he says, Israel condemns in every sense the latest anti-Semitic incidents and the brutal attack in the middle of Hanukkah at the rabbi's house in Muncie, New York. We send wishes for a speedy recovery to the injured. We will work together in every way with the local authorities in order to help eliminate this phenomena. We offer our help to all countries. Netanyahu. Doctor, which means it's time for some customer wish lists. From Cindy, dear doc, all I want for the holidays is clean carpets and a huge bonus. I'll speak with your boss, Cindy. Meantime, rent a rug doctor for just $34.99 and you'll save over $200 versus hiring a professional service. And from Harrison, my only request this year, more sleigh bell. Got you covered. Rent a rug doctor today. Find your location at rugdoctor.com. A few years ago, my wife and I couldn't find great bedding in any stores, so we founded our own company. I'm Scott Tannen, the founder of Bull & Branch, the world's most comfortable sheets. My wife Missy and I spent months developing the super soft, organic cotton fabric we're now known for. Since then, we've helped millions of people, including three U.S. presidents, get a great... Just $19.99 a month for 24 months. Plus, you'll have the option to upgrade to the next... Right off for 40 December 29th is we leave. What we see here, again, is an oasis of dates. In the middle of nowhere. That's our brothers, the Jews. Planting everywhere. There's no pacificity in this one. If they need it and they can do it, they're going to do it. My mom used to say to me, 
urging the military today to join him to take to the streets to force out the president, Nicolas Maduro. After what critics describe as an illegitimate inauguration of Maduro, Guaido challenged Maduro's claim to the presidency. President Trump recognizes Guaido as the legitimate president. Maduro accuses the United States of backing an attempted coup and expels U.S. diplomats from the country. The world watched as a stark message was sent to protesters. Maduro's forces would not tolerate dissent. Human rights activists say they're being backed up by an unprecedented police crackdown. The United States sanctions Venezuela's government-owned oil company. But almost a full year later, Maduro remains in power, more resilient than his opponents expected. As for the Venezuelans, Guaido once inspired, they continue to suffer from government corruption, inflation, and hunger, losing faith that much will change. Number two, abandoning a commitment, creating a vacuum. The invasion is underway in northern Syria. Turkey's president, Erdogan, said the military offensive there has begun. And our soldiers have been coming back over that period of time. Days earlier, President Trump makes an abrupt announcement that he is withdrawing U.S. troops from northern Syria, clearing the way for Turkey to launch an offensive. The move essentially abandons Kurdish fighters who have fought alongside American forces to defeat ISIS. Ceding power to Turkey, cementing Bashar al-Assad's grip on Syria, and benefiting the regional ambitions of Russia and Iran. At number one, a pro-democracy movement fights for autonomy. Breaking overnight from Hong Kong, protesters flooding the streets, clashing with police, as Hong Kong marks 22 years since it was formally returned to China. Frustrations were ignited with the proposal of a controversial extradition bill that would see mainland China's authority over the semi-autonomous region grow. At its peak, organizers estimate as many as two million took to the streets. The extradition... ...into retailers, restaurants, hotels, and hundreds of different types of businesses. Unlike getting financing through a bank, our unique financing services are very flexible with repayment plans customized to meet your needs. Our underwriting is extremely fast, allowing approval in as little as one day. It's totally stress-free. If you've been in business for at least a year, have an annual revenue of 150000 or more with a minimum credit score of 550, pick up the phone and call now for a free, no-obligation consultation to see what you qualify for. Dial 800-950-3788. 800-950-3788. That's 800-950-3788.
hit Justin Ross with a pass. He appeared to fumble a scoop and score for the Ohio State touchdown to take the lead. But hold everything. The play is reviewed and it's overturned as that pass is ruled incomplete. So the Buckeye lead is gone like it never happened. The old review. Yes. And in a pivotal moment, final minutes of the fourth quarter, Clemson is down. The Tigers superstar sophomore quarterback was incredible, leading Clemson the entire length of the field, 94 yards. Travis heading in, the game-winning touchdown, Ohio State. Interception late hurt them and ends their season. Okay, so we've already seen reaction from officials all across the board, including from uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo, who's already committed the, uh, the anti-hate crime uh, task force to investigating this, releasing a statement overnight saying, let me be clear, anti-Semitism and bigotry of any kind are repugnant to our values of inclusion and diversity, and we have absolutely zero tolerance for such acts of hate. Of course, the governor Ming goes on here. I think what we're seeing right now on the ground is obviously a sense of relief that nobody was killed. However, people are still uh, closely monitoring the condition of those individuals who were hurt, and at the same time, they're also calling on action, on changes, because there's two key questions here, of course, the why and the what. What will happen next to try to keep something like this from happening again, especially uh, if this investigation ultimately concludes uh, that, that, that this is the latest uh, hate crime uh, perpetrated against members of the Jewish community in the New York area. Guys? The, yeah, the latest, the eighth, as you mentioned, and really when you, when you boil it down, uh, it is the seventh straight day in a row that there has been an attack on this community yeah. in some way, shape, or form uh, in that area, in the New York area. Um, I wanted to ask you what we know about the suspect. Police are saying there's a suspect in custody. Do we know anything beyond that, Polo? Not much, but I can tell you uh, a little bit about what took place here uh, during the actual incident itself. According to several witnesses, this individual uh, that's uh, made his way into that home uh, and then began to hurt these uh, folks inside. And then, uh, according to several witnesses, some of the people who were inside essentially used whatever they could, including tables and chairs, to try to defend themselves and eventually chased him away. Uh, he then uh, jumped into a vehicle, according to what we're hearing from witnesses, uh, and then he made his way back to New York City, where, according to authorities, and, and, and and multiple versions of what we're hearing here on the ground, that's where he was detained. But we don't know much more than that. Uh, but the main question, of course, what we will certainly be digging for is a possible motive. What would have compelled this individual to uh, make his way to this location? All right, Polo Sandoval, uh, appreciate the update, certainly. Thank you. Now, last hour we spoke with Cedric Alexander, former president of the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives, and he says everyone in the community really needs to be vigilant and alert because there is no pattern to these recent attacks we've seen over the last seven days. That is certainly a pattern that we're seeing here is that there is no pattern. So as a result of that, uh, what you're going to see law enforcement do and what you see they already activated there in New York State is that even the local authorities there have heightened their patrols uh, in certain communities in uh, and around synagogues and uh, it becomes important for all of us uh, regardless of where we live to be able to support police support those communities
the frequency of those attacks and the severity of those attacks. Uh, but I've also seen a strong sense of determination. Uh, for example, right after the attack, and it is seen on video, where one of the people who was in the room chased the perpetrator to his vehicle and got a good read on the tags, gave it to law enforcement, and this obviously uh, helped to make sure that the person was arrested within hours. The other uh, sense of strength uh, was the rabbi going over to his synagogue, which is right next door, and continued with the celebrations, which I think uh, shows a determination that here in the United States, people do have the freedom and liberty to exercise a religious uh, life, and no attack and no event will deter, deter them from continuing this lifestyle. You see, we know that this is, is not the first attack in just last month, an Orthodox Jewish man was, was stabbed and beaten, we know, uh, near a local synagogue. Are there different steps people are taking there uh, in the Jewish community now, just in the last couple of weeks? No, I think uh, um, it's important for your viewers to understand that this is a strongly interconnected community throughout the uh, Muncie, which is a hamlet in the town of Ramapo, which is in Rockland County, uh, there are approximately 65,000 Orthodox Jewish people. So a lot of people know a lot of people here. And then, of course, people have uh, family and relatives in Brooklyn. In fact, Sunday night and Monday night, I was in Brooklyn with my family to visit other family members for the holiday season. So I don't think um, one story feels different than another story because sadly uh, and too often people know the victims or know uh, friends of the victim for example um, in this specific case one person is um, severely attacked and i know him and i know his family members we were neighbors 20 years ago so these things always hit closer to home it isn't just a random story that you open an app and start feeling about it people feel it closer to home every time these things happen we have uh, discussed this morning about this constant uh, uh, trend of violence and attacks uh, this week but this has been a trend that's been growing over a period of time we've heard the strong condemnation the allocation of law enforcement resources both from the governor and from mayor de blasio are you satisfied with the state and local response to this uh, anti-semitism I think a fair answer would be yes and no. The yes part is that right after every incident, you see law enforcement of all levels coming in in force and trying uh, to secure the scene, and, and they try to do what they need to do, whether it's in Jersey City or in Brooklyn, in Manhattan, or here in Rockland County. So that's the yes part. The other part, which is partially yes, is when we keep on hearing that uh, there will be uh, stepped up patrols Many times these things last for about 18 hours. Or in the case in Brooklyn, the 66th precinct, again, I'm not trying to malign the precinct overall, but they placed a long bus in front of a synagogue last week with no uh, law enforcement officials in it. So short of taking up some private space, I don't think it does anything. And this is where the concern starts moving in, that sometimes the stepped up security is not something that lasts. Now, I understand it is difficult for law enforcement to have a police officer in every congregation, every yeshiva. I understand that, but these stepped up securities need to continue beyond uh, sundown the next day. And finally, most importantly, it's something that I mentioned a couple of hours ago here on CNN. Uh, I think it is uh, high time for authorities, especially in Brooklyn, to release a list of incidents and the consequences. We we'll keep on hearing of attacks, we we'll keep on hearing someone was or wasn't arrested. No one has any idea what happened next or what is happening next. Are people sitting in jail? Are they getting sentenced to six months prison, community work? People don't know what the consequences are. And it's important, I think, because if people are out there with ill will and they are aware that uh, committing any act of violence, especially one which is driven by bigotry and hatred, if people will be aware that there are serious consequences, I think it may start to roll back the problem that we've been seeing in recent months. All right, uh, Yossi Gastetner, our thoughts are with you there, with the community there in 
uh, Muncie, New York. Thank you for spending a little time with us this morning. Of course. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Still ahead, we have more on this breaking news coverage. The mass stabbing, of course, in the home of a rabbi there in New York. We're going to go live to Jerusalem because they are paying attention. They are reacting there. Stay close. I'm going to stop the video. Thank you. 